I mentioned before that when I was in school, I you know, was in a Catholic school for 12 years, during which time I was very interested in the Catholic religion. And then after that, I left religion for a few years. And then when I graduated in 1971, I had a friend who was very interested in Hinduism, a Chinese, Malaysian Chinese. And because of his influence, I got into Hinduism. <laughs> from 1971 onwards until, you could say, until I met Buddhism in 1976. And during that span of like five years, I wrote to India for books like Ramakrishna, Mark, and uh, I wrote to other uh, Hindu organizations for uh, these uh, teachings of these uh, great Hindu masters. And then I also corresponded with this Self-Realization Fellowship. Yogananda and I got books from them. So I had already been practicing meditation and uh, teach, uh, learning the uh, Upanishads, Vedanta and all that, which were quite similar to Buddhist teachings. So when I came into the Buddha's teachings, I found that uh, it was much better, much uh, better explained, much more detailed. The Buddha's words in the suttas are very, very detailed and very precise. Mainly because he's a Samasambuddha, uh, unlike some of these uh, uh, Hindu saints. Some of these Hindu saints could well have been Pajika Buddhas, but uh, they didn't. Uh, they, 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 they certainly, some of them could have been enlightened, but the way they explained were, were, were not so detailed as the Buddha. So when we go into the, in the suttas, we find it's full of practical advice uh, from simple things like for a monk to learn to be contented, to have few wants. Uh, and um, to live in secluded places. Uh, or when you live with monks, to live with monks who have experience, who are well learned in the Dhamma Vinaya, in the suttas and the Vinaya. So many of these suttas, when we study it for the first time, we find that uh, we catch one or two points. And then when we study it for the second time, we catch another one or two points. And sometimes very important points we miss out until we have learned it for studied the sutta several times. Then we catch the important implication. Even a simple sutta where the Buddha said that uh, among should not uh, chant in a high sing-song manner like Mahayana monks do. <laughs> uh, and he said that uh, if you do that, if a monk chants in a sing-song manner, then he becomes distracted by it. And then he thinks that he's got a very high, a very beautiful voice and he becomes, uh, how do you say, uh, uh, he thinks too much of himself. And the, the Buddha says, uh, it can also make the monk lose his concentration. Uh, that, that point, I think a lot of people don't catch. Uh, but if a monk is practicing, then you realize actually the Buddha wants his disciples to maintain the concentration the whole day. That's how a, a, a monk becomes an arhan. An arhan in the Vinaya books is supposed to be mindful 24 hours a day. Before he can come to that stage, he has already got to practice to the point of being mindful 24 hours a day. So, if a person were to practice uh, to be mindful 24 hours a day, then uh, that is the correct practice. And actually, that is the practice of Satipatthana. In the uh, Satipatthana Sangyutta, the Buddha gave uh, it on, uh, uh, how do you say, uh, like, uh, let's see, hitting the, uh, uh, hit with the head of the nail with the, the hammer. And uh, this simile he gave uh, was that um, to practice Satipatthana, he gave this simile. He said, the, the most beautiful girl of the country came out. And the uh, men saw, and they clapped their hands, and they shouted, the most beautiful girl of the country. And more men came out and shouted. And some men clapped and asked her to sing and dance. And she started to sing and dance. And then more 
more people came out and they shouted and they clapped their hands and they enjoyed her singing and dancing. And then an ordinary guy came along who wanted his life, who did not want suffering. And he was caught by these soldiers and forced to carry a bowl of oil filled to the brim. And he was told that uh, uh, behind him a soldier would be walking with an upraised sword. And if he spilled even a, a, a drop of the oil, his head would be chopped off. So that being so, this, this, this man had to walk amongst the, a crowd of people. And the Buddha asked the disciples, would he, would he look to his right or to his left? And they said, no. Would he look at the most beautiful girl of the country? Certainly not. So he has to pay attention on this bowl of oil all the time, one pointed attention. And then, then the Buddha, that simile the Buddha gave was to make us understand that the, the practice of Satipatthana is actually an intense state of mindfulness or recollection that brings one to mindfulness 24 hours a day. That's why in one of these uh, Satipatthana, Sangyutta, Suttas, the Buddha said, a skillful monk who practices Satipatthana attains Samadhi, while an unskillful monk does not attain Samadhi. But unfortunately nowadays, uh, some teachers teach that Satipatthana has absolutely nothing to do with jhana, with Samadhi. This is not the case in the Suttas.